literally everywhere in here. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a very, very different style of video. This video is about the big head carp, the silver carp, the flying fish, but mostly we're going to be talking just about Asian carp. All of those are categorized into the same thing, but that's the topic of today's video. I heard the carp are really bad. We're gonna do our part to try to clean up the river a little bit. Cleaning up the river yet again. We're gonna do our part to clean up the river again. What was once a great place to fish for? Uh, a lot of wipers, walleyes, white bass, smallmouth. Uh, a lot of quality fish like this were constantly coming out of this river. And um, now this river has turned into what I'd like to call a nightmare of a fishery. Another Asian carp. Asian carp. Another Asian carp. I think it's a carp. Asian carp. It's a huge Asian carp. Asian carp's in the dark. Oh, it's an Asian carp. I'm pretty sure it's a carp. Another Asian carp. Many people will claim that these fish, especially these Asian carp, do not eat game fish. They won't take game fish in the mouth. But I can assure you that they do. I've constantly caught uh, these Asian carp, these silver carp, in the mouth with rattle traps. And these rattle traps are shaped exactly like shad and that's what uh, a lot of these game fish and uh, the carp are eating in here there's just tons and tons of shad and you can tell that if a carp is willing to take a rattle trap it's definitely taking a shad and those shad that's a main source of food for these larger game fish even if it's unintentional i can tell you for sure that these fish are eating these shad in the mouth so the question i have is what should be done what uh what can we do to try to help eliminate some of these carp? Today I'm on the river and even just on the banks now, they're, it's polluted with them. So one of my theories is that potentially the DNR could come out here and try to electric shock this place and try to get these carp out by the thousands. Obviously it's not going to eliminate the problem completely, but it would be a good start. And I'm unsure of the negative side effects of something like electric shocking but I'm sure that even if it were to stun or kill some of these game fish, if we could get these Asian carp out of here, it would eventually allow for everything else to come back stronger and better than it currently is. Hopefully what was once an incredible walleye fishery could return to the incredible fishery that it was. I've been fishing this area for roughly eight to 10 years now. I mean, I've been fishing it my entire life, but I've been heavily fishing it for around five to eight years. And even in that short time, I can tell the destruction that these fish are doing and what they're causing to this river. The impact that they are having is tremendous. So these Asian carp were first introduced into the southern United States in the early 1960s and 70s. And by the 80s, three of the four species of these carp had escaped and then they had gotten into other bodies, they had gotten into other bodies of water. Today the Asian carp have spread through Mississippi, Ohio, Missouri, and even the Illinois rivers and all of their tributaries, um, similar to this here, the Tippecanoe River. And they've spread because of flooding. Years and years of flooding has caused them to get into rivers such as this. The waterway will flood and then it spreads rapidly. It's not like a slow process. It's quickly, quickly evolving. You might even wonder why they were originally brought here and they were brought originally for commercial fishing and to help keep algae out of farm ponds and try to keep those ponds clean but as you see it's gotten out of control these fish really are an incredible fish they can grow to 39 inches or up to 60 pounds they can get absolutely monstrous they're capable of growing up to 12 pounds in a single year which is unheard of for any type of game fish it makes it very difficult for these carp to have any natural predators the best predators for these carp is 100 percent humans um, humans will take these carp and they'll either eat them, they'll turn them into fertilizer, or they've turned it into a sport like bow fishing now. Anything to try to remove these invasive species. In a waterway such as this, whenever they're caught here locally, people will remove them from water. People will remove them from the water, they will throw them up on shore, they will rip gills out and put them back in the water, or they will even take them to the local dumpster where they recommend that you take them and discard them. This river is completely littered with these nasty rotting carp all over the ground. Um, I wish that you could smell what this river is like daily because of these fish. It's not just any fish that's on the shore, it is only these Asian carp. Hardly any other fish are dead on the shore. A 
few weeks back, my buddy even caught a 28 pound, my buddy even caught a 28 pound carp that we're gonna take a look at. It was way too big for our net, but we still managed to get it in. The net was not big enough. We were only able to get half the fish in, but luckily it got caught up and we were able to get it in. Is it an Asian carp? Oh my God. <laughs> that thing is enormous. It's a huge Asian carp, but it's monstrous. There you go, making some progress. Keep doing that, that'll put some more tension on him. Once you get close, you're gonna wanna back up. Don't break the rod off. I just don't know how I'm gonna be able to net him. That thing's way too big for the net. What direction you wanna go? You wanna take it to the beach? Lift, I'm going under you. Mother of God! Oh my God, damn! The <laughs> solid man. Twenty-seven pounds. As you've seen in that clip, that uh, that fish was an absolute monster. The mouth was easily big enough to swallow a baseball. The average fish caught down here on this river around this dam is eight to twelve pounds easily. It's not unlikely to be able to even pull twenty of these fish out in a single trip. And uh, what might seem like a fun fight is not always the case. It can lead to fish entering the current and you can spend half of an hour trying to fight a fish just to return your lure to your tackle box. This fish can suck to the bottom and get your line snagged very easily due to the tremendous size and current. These beasts are capable of snapping rods by the dozens. I'm victim of it myself, breaking lines and even straightening hooks. Oh Jesus, well there goes my rattle trap. Catch one with a red uh, rattle trap in it, it's mine. A lot of people have turned to bow fishing. Um, I see quite a few boats at nighttime come down here and I've even seen a boat at one time loaded down to the point of sinking because it had hundreds if not a thousand or more Asian carp inside of it. I've seen people cruising, I've seen people cruising up and down the river with helmets on because these fish will jump out of the water because they want to escape the water when the vibrations from the motor are on. For some reason they don't like it and that's how they get their name, the flying fish. These fish can simply be caught in all different types of weather. Conditions simply do not matter to these fish. Clouds, sunshine, rain, even in the dark they'll bite. I want to say thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, these carp are terrible for the river and uh, we need to figure out a way to remove them from the water and we need to do it quickly. Let me know down below what you guys think and what you would recommend to get rid of these fish because they're going to keep spreading rapidly.